My name's Melissa from Jam Jar Flowers, and I'm here today at Time in Gloucestershire with my co-conspirators, Amy and India, and we're pressing flowers from Time for an exhibition we're doing here this summer. When you're picking from the wild, uh, one of the very important things to say is that we're on private land here and we have permission to pick. If you're picking something like buttercups, it's absolutely fine to pick the flowers, but don't pull up the roots unless you have permission from the landowners. We try to be very careful about how we pick. We pick one or two flowers only from each clump. If there are less than 20 of a type of flower, leave it and go on until you find somewhere where there are more, because the idea is that you leave the countryside so that it can recover. So when you press a flower, you're catching a fleeting moment, that moment when the flower was perfect and in all its glory, and instead of just dying away and becoming hay, it becomes a beautiful thing. So my friend and colleague Amy is now going to show you how to press flowers to get the best results. Having a good flower press is a good start. So what we've got here is one of our jam jar flower presses, and you start with a piece of card. Onto that card goes a piece of blotting paper and the blotting paper is going to draw all of the moisture out of your flowers so kind of a good quality blotting paper is always really good um, for that process. Then onto the blotting paper goes your flower. Um, now you want all of the stems and everything to be inside um, and on the paper. You also need to make sure the flower's got quite a lot of space around it for that moisture to um, seep out into the paper. So I'm going to just cut that a little bit shorter. And just encourage the stems to just do their natural thing, encourage the curves. Onto that flower goes another piece of blotting paper. And don't be afraid to press down because they're going to get pressed anyway in the, in the flower press. Once you've pressed down and your flowers go in to check because see this one here is, is actually gone into profile and I actually would like that to be flattened out. Onto the next sheet of blotting paper goes a piece of card. Now the card is going to act as a barrier layer in between that sandwich of blotting paper to even out the moisture throughout the press. And then basically the process is to keep on going with that same step over and over again until your flower press is full. So once either your press is full or you've used up all of your flowers and your blotting paper and card, the top of your flower press goes on. Then the wing nuts go onto your screws and then screw those all nice and tight. And so there's a nice even pressure over the whole press. So now that flower press is nice and tight, to give it a nice even pressure, leave your flowers in your press for at least five days before you go to check on them again. Um, when you do open your flower press again to check the flowers, peel back the paper from the flowers quite gently. Um, otherwise, if you peel the flowers from the paper, they, they can tear just because they can be quite fragile. Um, check on the flowers. If they still feel damp, which they definitely can do after five days, um, just either change the position of the flower head on the paper to a dry bit of paper, or if the paper feels quite damp, just replace this sheet of paper entirely. Um, this little buttercup here has probably been pressed for about 10 days. They're quite delicate flowers, so they press quite quickly. With something like a tulip, um, something like this will take maybe two or three weeks to press fully because there's more moisture in their petals in their head. So the next stage is to compose your pressed flowers into artworks um, and India is going to show you a little bit about how to do that. So when your flowers come out the press and you've deconstructed them, to press them nicely, the flower heads separately and some of the leaves separately, then you, are, you come to reconstructing them on the page. So you get a nice position with lots of space around your specimen. And then you get the individual flower heads and slip them in and make sure you position them at the stem where they'd naturally grow. And then you can get your individual leaves and place those where they'd naturally be growing. So you're reconstructing your specimen on the page. We use a classic, easily available art glue. This one is called Mod Podge. 
and you turn your leaf over onto a piece of paper and you gently brush the whole back of your leaf. You pick up your leaf and you gently place it down on your mount in position. Now do the flower head. So with this you want to go for a blob at the top of your stem and gently brush outwards in case the petals come off and up the stem. And once you have each part of your specimen glued, then get a piece of paper and gently press over it just to make sure everything is making contact with the mount board and is securely glued down. This will also lift up any excess that has been left and then you leave it to dry and there you have your mounted specimen. So this is a smaller specimen but if you come and see our exhibition at time you'll see how we've stretched this craft into large-scale artworks. <laughs>